Now we're going to begin um, going into the Omni Direct and Spotlights and uh, working with the shadow casting. Now I do want to make sure that you're aware uh, if, if you are continuing uh, from the last tutorial that uh, you turn the, um, you go up to rendering, you actually turn Light Tracer off or you can reset the scene. But what happens is once you apply re, um, the light tracer, even if you delete the, delete the skylight, uh, light tracer will still exist and that will give you um, some complications with the standard lights that don't work well with uh, light tracer. So here I'm on back to a regular scene where I can skylight, um, I'm sorry, render, and uh, I have the uh, standard ambient lighting that goes on in the scene here. So going back into Create Lights, let's go back to an Omni and drop an Omni out here. Uh, we'll raise it up a bit so it's kind of uh, casting a light shadow, or a light on the side of here, the shadow on the back side. We go out, we hit Render. Notice there are no shadows. Now with the light selected, if you go to Modify, we have the word Shadows. If you select Shadows, by default you should have Shadow Map. So I'm going to go ahead and now do a quick render. And notice here it actually puts a black shadow back there. Now it's completely black because there's no other light in the source except for the Omni light. Now what I could do is I could clone this light over here and I could turn its shadows off. And then when I render, what's going to happen is, is I'm going to get the shadow from here but then the light source back here is going to keep this from being completely blacked out. That a lot of times looks more real. Shadows very seldom are completely black because of the way light actually works bouncing around off of objects. Okay, now when you clone a, uh, a light it holds that characteristic so we had to turn the shadows off. Again, maybe we don't want washout in this scene. We can go ahead and change that multiplier down to 0.5 and then clone that light. Okay, maybe do it one more time. And this one can be the shadow caster where these two will not. They'll just light up the area. Again, we'll do a, ro a, a quick render. Okay, so we see we still have the shadow back there and it, it's pretty obvious, but it's very crisp and clean. Sometimes shadows don't work that way. So depending on what you're trying to achieve here, the next thing you can do is go into the light that has the shadow and you can change the shadow. Uh, try area shadows and then we'll do a quick render. Notice here it softens it a little bit and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to move our scene this way and I want you to watch at how the, the shadow affects as it gets farther and farther away from the object. Okay, and this is more realistic here. Area shadows pretty much show um, when the light comes right off the object that's crisp clear, but as it goes, you get that depth of field look where uh, it's actually faded. Where if we go back and we do that with shadow map, notice it, it does it a little bit, but not quite as, as uh, much as the um, area shadows. And then we go to ray trace. Okay, we, we have uh, several different ones here, but go to Ray Traced Shadows and do a render there. Okay, we're sort of back, but notice how crisp clear that is. A Ray Trace Shadow is, 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 ver is a very unreal shadow, but sometimes you want to achieve that, uh, and, and that's what you would use. Later on, we'll do Advanced Ray Trace, and uh, we'll be working with Mental Ray in uh, Animation 2. Okay, so I did cover with you area shadows, shadow map, and ray trace uh, to give you an example of how uh, shadows work in a scene.